Hello, my name is Hannah Grunendijk. I'm a senior international studies major and the current student body president. The Student Senate of Covenant is made up of 15 students, four class presidents, five residence hall presidents, the campus activities board director, a communications director, a vice president, a student body treasurer, me, the student body president, and a new position for this year, the multicultural liaison. Student Senate strives to serve the student body by creating campus events and curating campus conversations. We hear from different members of the administration and faculty at our weekly meetings and provide them with a student perspective. We also work to make ourselves as accessible to the student body as possible through the use of social media, open office hours, and by supporting campus organizations. Students are thankful to be back on campus, experiencing the beauty of our mountain and the beauty of our community. We're thankful to President Halverson and the Cabinet for thoughtfully and prayerfully making that possible for us. And it is my pleasure to introduce our President, Derek Halverson. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this Saturday morning. Uh, we wish that you could be here with us on the mountain. Uh, we've been praying uh, since last year that we would have beautiful weather on homecoming weekend, and uh, we do. So the high today will be in the mid to upper 60s, sunny blue skies, nice cool breeze. And unfortunately, uh, we're having to do this virtually uh, this year. Uh, so we wish you could be here. Uh, 2020 has been uh, quite a year for us, as I'm sure it has been for uh, all of you as well. We've had to navigate uh, COVID-19, a, a pandemic, um, social unrest around racial issues. We're in the midst of a, of a contentious election cycle. And all of those things have, have really um, convinced me, reminded me that it's never been more important uh, for Covenant College uh, to be doing what it is that Covenant College uh, does. I've uh, never be, been more important to uh, help shape men and women who understand first and foremost their identity in Christ. Um, we all have other identities, uh, but for us as followers of Jesus Christ, that is our primary identity, our identity in Jesus Christ. Um, helping to form and shape men and women uh, who have a biblical frame of reference, um, who see all of life through the lens of Scripture and who, who are committed to the authority of Scripture uh, over every aspect of their lives. Um, and to form and shape men and women who are committed to lives of uh, Christ-like service, um, lives in which they might even uh, make sacrifices for the sake of bearing witness uh, to the preeminence of Jesus Christ in all things. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced uh, that the world really needs uh, men and women like that. Uh, the church needs men and women like that. And so we seek to uh, inspire and equip um, students uh, to serve as courageous participants in God's redeeming and reconciling work uh, in the world. Uh, we believe that's really uh, critical, uh, particularly at this time uh, in our country's history. Um, and so uh, we wanna see graduates who have been formed and uh, educated in this way. Um, it makes them truly uh, distinctive and different uh, in our culture. Uh, not easy to peg, um, not easy to pin down. They don't easily fit into uh, the categories our world so often has to offer because they are committed first and foremost um, to Jesus Christ and to his redeeming and reconciling work in this world. They're committed to uh, the truths and the authority of scripture over every aspect of life. Um, they're committed to the church, to the body of Christ, um, and they're committed uh, to living all of life uh, in light of Jesus Christ's preeminence. Um, the world needs these sort of people, and so we're really uh, honored to have the opportunity to serve uh, Jesus Christ um, and his church and his kingdom uh, by playing a part in shaping and educating young men and women to go into the world uh, and to serve in that way. Um, we are committed to uh, providing an education that doesn't compromise, uh, that doesn't compromise on its commitment to biblical truth, uh, to Jesus Christ and his word, and that doesn't compromise on providing outstanding and academically rigorous education. We believe there are increasingly few places in the world where young men and women uh, can receive that sort of education. So that's what we seek, uh, we continue to seek to provide uh, here at Covenant College. Um, and it's because of our commitment to that uh, that we worked really hard uh, to get folks back onto campus uh, this fall. So it was March 12th of this past spring 
uh, that we made um, what lots of people now are referring to as the great pivot. Uh, I don't like to call it pivot so much because I feel like that word's perhaps getting overused, but um, it was on the March 12th that we made the decision while students were away on spring break uh, to shift to online delivery of courses for the remainder of the semester to have all the students return home. That was a significant uh, decision for us, um, demanded a lot of retooling in a very short amount of time for faculty and staff alike, um, of course, and understandably very disappointing uh, for students, and yet we felt that it was uh, the prudent decision to make in light of what was going on in the world at that point in time. Um, I think the faculty uh, and staff did an outstanding job in a uh, difficult uh, situation there. Uh, the feedback that we've gotten from students on the spring semester is they felt like their, their professors did a great job under difficult circumstances. Uh, it also was pretty clear from that feedback that students were really eager uh, to be back on campus. Um, and so uh, we made a decision uh, very early on to do everything we could to allow pe people to be back on campus here on top of uh, Lookout Mountain. That took a lot of work over the summer um, in the midst of a lot of uncertainty, both about uh, the coronavirus, uncertainty about the financial implications of early shutdown um, and uh, what that might mean for us. We were uh, blessed to be the recipients of Paycheck Protection Program, uh, Forgivable Loan and CARES Act funds that helped to cover the costs associated with uh, refunding students, um, their room and board for the remainder of the semester. Um, and it helps to cover the cost of a smaller incoming class uh, this year. Um, we're also really grateful for uh, the giving um, that was done by alumni and friends of the college over the course of uh, the spring and summer of this year. Uh, really remarkable support that was given to the college uh, by um, many of you who are uh, watching in today. Uh, we're incredibly thankful for that. Uh, we had a, a an outstanding year in our annual fund. Um, and the annual fund, as many of you know, is the fund that bridges the gap between the revenue we receive from student tuition and fees and the actual cost of delivering a Covenant College education. Uh, we had intended to raise uh, $2.4 million this past year in our annual fund and um, donors generously gave over $3.1 million to the annual fund this past year. So we're incredibly thankful uh, to all of you who supported the college um, through giving. Uh, as I mentioned, a uh, challenging summer uh, for all of us who were here on campus as we sought to prepare the campus to reopen in the midst of a very uncertain uh, public health situation demanded a lot of uh, time and energy and creativity from faculty and staff who were here. Uh, we were really thrilled to welcome uh, students back to campus in August. Um, and uh, so far, it's been a really good start to the academic year. It's an unusual uh, start to the academic year, to be sure. Uh, we're all wearing masks in uh, public places and in classes. Um, we're distanced in our classrooms, uh, which has meant some classes have to move to larger spaces. We have new outdoor spaces on campus. So if you were here with us, you'd wander by the pool and it's now covered by a deck and a pavilion, a uh, lovely outdoor gathering space um, that also provides uh, overflow for the Great Hall. Uh, one of the other funny things about this semester is that uh, chapel, whenever the weather permits, is outside, uh, which um, has really been really wonderful and beautiful in a lot of ways, uh, but has also made us miss uh, the days when we could pack the entire student body into the chapel uh, and worship and be encouraged uh, together. So it's been an unusual start, uh, but also an encouraging one in many respects. It's great to be back on campus. Um, feedback, uh, as you heard from Hannah, has been positive from students about uh, being on campus, even with the restrictions that we have in place. Um, it's also been a good start to the year in terms of uh, COVID-19. Uh, to date, uh, we have only had one confirmed positive among uh, the students uh, over the course of this semester and no confirmed positives among faculty and staff. Uh, we're really thankful for that. Uh, we're participating, I think some people know, in a Mayo Clinic uh, study um, on uh, antibodies. So we had uh, hundreds of folks from the campus community take an antibody study at the beginning of the semester. We're getting ready to take that a second time and that will help us assess uh, asymptomatic um, transmission within our community. Uh, we're thrilled to be one of two institutions in the country that's participating in that study with the Mayo Clinic. So we're really grateful for the ways in which God has uh, watched over this community, provided for us, um, protected us from uh, disease. And we're really thankful for the support that so many um, alumni have shown to the college. Uh, I've, I've often thought that I've, I've never been more grateful for an engaged and concerned uh, alumni community um, that really cares about uh, Covenant um, and, and cares uh, for our students and our faculty and our staff. Uh, so thank you for the support that you've shown to us. Um, 
I did mention uh, that um, there are a lot, or should have mentioned perhaps, that there are a lot of uh, great things going on on campus in addition to just sort of the, the nuts and bolts that we're really excited about. Um, this past year was a, a banner year for our athletic department. Um, our uh, athletes this spring posted the highest GPA uh, in aggregate that we've ever had in the NCAA era. It was a 3.35 GPA for the entire athletic uh, program this past spring. Uh, every single one of our teams had a GPA over 3.0. Uh, we finished second in the conference in the President's Cup standings uh, for overall athletic performance out of 19 institutions. Um, and we did that without football, so we didn't pick up any points from football. Uh, we also uh, had multiple uh, coaches and athletes receive uh, Coach or Athlete of the Year awards. So a great year for uh, the athletic department. We're really excited um, about that and that good result there. Um, also continue to be encouraged by uh, some of the outcomes that we're seeing uh, post uh, graduation. Um, our most recent data shows that 92% of, of our graduates were employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation, which is a really uh, outstanding figure, uh, much better than the national figures on that front. Uh, also encouraged that again in our most recent alumni survey, 93% um, of alums uh, reported that they are members or regular attenders of a local church, uh, which is a significant uh, statistic in our minds, um, indicative of uh, your ongoing commitment um, to uh, the body of Christ in its local manifestation, uh, which is really encouraging to us here at the college. Have also just received some really encouraging uh, data back from uh, the National Survey of Student in, uh, Engagement, NESI, uh, which uh, indicates um, that our seniors uh, report uh, that um, the way they approach uh, their thinking, their academic work, their life um, has been significantly shaped in their time at Covenant College um, and they have been pushed and, uh, and prodded to do all of that, to think, uh, to live, uh, to work in light of the truths of Scripture um, and the authority of Jesus Christ uh, over all of life. Um, that data from Nessie indicates uh, that we are doing much better than um, our Christian college peers on that front. And we're really thankful for that, uh, that encouragement from Nessie as well. Uh, we're also encouraged by some of the, the signs that we see as we look to the future. Um, this semester, uh, or this fall, we had our best retention um, in the last 20 years. We have 20 years of data on retention. Um, our retention is at, at a 20-year high, over 91% of the students eligible, eligible, eligible excuse me, to return this fall uh, did do that. We're really thankful for that. Um, and our inquiries for uh, next fall's incoming class, uh, those students who have requested information about the college um, are up by 30% over last year. Um, and that's a very encouraging uh, number for us as well. We're really thankful for uh, the work that Brad Thomas, um, who's been with us for a year and a half and leading our admissions office has done, and John Horton, um, who joined us last August after 19 years doing marketing at Disney uh, to lead our marketing and communications efforts. Um, those two folks and their teams have done an outstanding job over the course of this year, and we're grateful for that um, and encouraged by what that might mean for uh, the future here at Covenant College. Um, we're eager to fill up uh, our incoming class with uh, qualified young men and women um, who want to be here at Covenant College. So. Uh, there are encouraging signs as we look to the future. Um, as I mentioned before, we're also really encouraged by the support we've received from alumni of the college. And um, I'll say again what we often uh, remind alumni of when we're out and have opportunity to meet with those folks, and that is that we ask uh, alumni of the college to do four things. Um, we ask alumni to pray for the college. We ask alumni to uh, send uh, students to the college. We ask alumni uh, to give to the college. We ask alumni to visit. So pray, send, give, and visit. Um, and I'll ask you in particular to pray for a, a few things um, this year. Uh, Sarah Caitlin Van Pufflin, who many of you know, um, who's our coordinator of alumni relations, uh, she said I could ask you to pray for three things, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to pray for, for five. Um, certainly, I always ask that folks um, would pray that God would keep us faithful. Um, the, the landscape of American higher education is littered with formerly Christian colleges or nominally Christian colleges. And so the last thing the world needs is another formerly Christian college. So please uh, pray that God would keep us uh, faithful. Um, pray that he would protect us during uh, this season of COVID. We're thankful for the way he's watched over us to this point and would ask uh, you to pray for his continued watch care over the college community, our faculty and staff and students alike. Um, we'd also ask that you pray for energy for uh, faculty and staff and students. Uh, Hannah could tell you that uh, students are tired. We're running on a compressed schedule this fall semester, uh, no fall break. Um, so uh, it's a sprint from start to finish. We'll be finished by with all of our exams by the time Thanksgiving rolls around. 
And so people are tired. Um, faculty and staff are tired because they've been working through the summer, through the semester. Uh, so pray, pray that God gives us energy. Um, then I would ask that you pray for uh, our admissions work and the recruitment of uh, our next class, our next few classes here at the college. Uh, the thing that we do um, works great when we put outstanding faculty in the classroom with gifted and motivated students. And so uh, please pray that God would bring us a bumper crop of students who are a great fit for Covenant College. And the last thing I ask you to pray for is uh, for unity. Um, Kevin Smith, uh, senior pastor at New City Fellowship, uh, was on campus this summer. We had a, a service of uh, confession and lament, a prayer service, uh, just a couple weeks after the killing of George Floyd. And Kevin came up and spoke and um, delivered a really powerful exhortation uh, on 1 Peter chapter 5, um, where uh, Peter writes that uh, the devil is prowling about like a roaring lion, uh, seeking whom he may devour. And Kevin asked us, he said, have you ever heard a lion roar? And he said, if you've been in the zoo and you've heard a lion roar, it will stop you in your tracks. And zoologists will tell you uh, that's, uh, that's on purpose. Um, when a lion roars, it causes uh, prey uh, to freeze, um, to panic, to split apart. And Kevin reminded us that uh, Satan would love to see us um, divided, uh, love to see his people divided, love to see the church divided, love to see Covenant College divided. And so um, I'd ask that you pray that we would be uh, united um, even in this uh, really challenging season in our country's history um, and in the college's history. Uh, so we'd be grateful for that. So please uh, pray for us. Please send students um, who you think might be a good fit at Covenant College. Covenant alumni know better than anyone else um, the type of people who are a great fit here at Covenant. Uh, so please encourage students to come and visit the college. We have sneak peek campus visit days over the course of the fall and spring semester. They're not overnights right now because of uh, COVID-19 restrictions, um, but there are opportunities for students to come and spend a day on campus and visit classes and meet students and faculty. So encourage them to do that. Um, Please do think about giving to the college. As I mentioned, uh, the giving of alumni and friends of the college has been really important to us in this critical season in the college's history, and we'd be grateful for uh, your continued financial support of the college. And then please come and visit. Um, there are restrictions on campus. Folks have to wear masks in buildings. Um, there are some places we can't go right now, uh, but you can always check in at the visitor center. Uh, you can email us, alumni at covenant.edu, to get more information. We'd love to have you come back um, and visit us here on the top of Lookout Mountain. So uh, thanks very much for uh, tuning in this morning. We're grateful to have uh, so many of you with us, a lot more than we would normally have crammed into the lobby of Carter Hall, so that's great. Um, we're thankful for your interest in uh, what's going on here at Covenant, for your support of the college. Um, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Hannah now because I think she is going to uh, moderate questions. Yeah, I've got some questions for you, President All Alerson. Right. The first question we have is, what's your favorite spot on campus? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I suppose if I had to whittle it down to one, I would say it's, it's the overlook. Mm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Uh, one of the great things about coming in at the start of the day is you get to take in sunrises uh, oh, yeah. on the overlook. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the overlook. I, my close second would probably be the Great Hall. Um, it's, a, it's a lively mm -hmm. place. I mean, you know, <laughs> great conversations happening around tables. Yeah. Uh, a lot of joy in that room, even with uh, some COVID-19 restrictions in place. Definitely. How has it been being a parent of a Covenant student? Oh man, um, it's a super question. I'll try not to get uh, choked up. Um, I was, it's not an easy thing for uh, my son to choose to come to Covenant because mm -hmm. when your dad's the president um, and you have a fairly unusual or distinctive last name, you kind of stick out. <laughs> uh, so uh, he waited until the last minute to make his commitment, but um, we have been so grateful for uh, the experience he's had even in just the first, several weeks of uh, the semester. Um, he's, he's loving his time here at Covenant. We hope not too much. Uh, midterm <laughs> grades come out soon, but um, yeah. we have been so encouraged by uh, his reports to us of the conversations that he's having with faculty, uh, with his fellow students. We're encouraged by some of the decisions that he's making yeah. um, on his own now without us looking over his shoulder um, that suggest to us that he is uh, developing his own, forming his own um, biblically grounded perspective on uh, life and work. So um, we're, we couldn't be happier um, and are really excited to, be, to see how he grows over the course of his time here at Covenant. That's great. So a more serious question perhaps, are board meetings happening this semester? Yeah, so the board uh, will continue to meet uh, this year on its normal schedule, although those meetings are happening 
virtually as opposed to in person. Uh, so for the same reason we're not bringing hundreds of alumni back onto campus for homecoming, we're not bringing trustees from all over the country onto campus uh, right now just um, to try to minimize uh, risk. So the board will meet uh, in 13 days uh, on Friday the 16th of October um, over Zoom. Uh, so we'll have the full array of uh, trustees and advisors on that call. And then board committees are meeting next week. So the board typically meets October, March. That will still happen. And the board has actually met more frequently over the course of the, of the pandemic um, just to, to make sure that they were monitoring everything that was happening here on campus. I know student senators are excited to sit in on some of those board committee meetings. So we're thankful for that opportunity. What has been the most challenging part of COVID for you personally? Mm. How can the alumni community be praying for you specifically as the president at this time? Mm. That's a very, uh, that's a kind question and a good one as well. I think the, the hardest part about COVID for me is that it, it just, it limits the amount of human interaction that you can have. And certainly in my experience as a covenant student, that was a central feature of uh, covenant, a covenant education was, um, you know, conversations in, uh, in the classroom, but also in faculty offices or on the quad or in the great hall or in a dorm room. And uh, those are just much harder to have. I have less interaction with students now than, um, than I would in a normal semester. And I know that's true for for faculty and, and staff as well, and true for, for students who um, some have expressed to me that it's just hard to be on Covenant's campus and then not be able to engage with fellow students um, yeah. and with faculty members the way. So that's been really uh, hard for me. I mean, and I would say too, it's also hard because it's limited uh, the amount of interaction that I get to do with folks off campus as well. I've had very few uh, trips um, since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, actually, I guess only a couple trips since the beginning of the pandemic. And um, that might be hard for my wife more than it is for me because I'm around the house a lot more than I normally would be. But it's, it's a great gift when you get to sit with folks um, around the country who love Covenant, are excited about Covenant. And, you, and so I don't get that, that energy that comes from hearing from people who are so excited about what's happening here and want to support what's happening here. And, uh, and so that's been really challenging um, for me. In terms of prayer, um, I mean, the prayer for me would be the same as it is, I think, for students and faculty and staff. It's just, we're all, we're all tired. It's been a lot of work, um, and it feels like we're constantly sprinting. Um, so many unknowns, so you're working in a, an area of uncertainty. And so I know um, when I talk to, to students and to faculty and staff, um, we're tired. Uh, we're more evident. It's more evident to us now than ever that we need God's sustaining uh, strength in our lives. So... Um, Folks can pray that uh, God sustains us. Hmm. What's one of your favorite memories from being a Covenant student? Ooh. I'm interested to hear this. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, I have so many good memories um, from life on the hall and playing soccer. Um, so last, not this past Wednesday, the Wednesday before was Day of Prayer, and. Yeah. Um, I took some time over during the day of prayer to, to walk campus and to pray for uh, what's going on at campus. And it was uh, really moving for me to walk past places where I remember having conversations, um, particularly fa conversations I had with faculty members that, that changed the trajectory of my life. Um, and so it was uh, meaningful to be reminded as I moved from place to place on campus of uh, of those of those conversations of those people who had spoken into my life and um, and as a result had propelled me in a direction that I hadn't ever considered uh, going before. So I was thinking of conversations I had with Steve Kaufman, with Lou Voskel, with Reg McClelland um, that were just were powerful conversations for me. So that's a that's fresh in my mind because it happened just uh, during day of prayer a week and a half ago. Um, I could think of other great memories though. Big wins in soccer games and intramural basketball triumphs. Uh, I threw seven alley-oop passes in one intramural basketball game. That was a pretty good memory. Uh, Way to go. I have not done that. It's, help it's helpful <laughs> to have tall teammates. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely hard for me to choose a favorite memory. Yeah, so yeah. I understand that dilemma. We have an alumnus who's heard that you have a lot of books in your office. 
what would you recommend that people read right now? Oh man, um, that's a, another great question. I do have a lot of books. Uh, I have to read them much faster than I would like because they pile up so quickly. So I just finished reading uh, Erwin Ince's book, The Beautiful Community, and it's on a, a biblical vision for uh, racial reconciliation. Um, Erwin's uh, recent moderator of the PCA General Assembly, a past Covenant College parent. He's um, a trustee elect for our board of trustees. Uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful book, um, really uh, both challenging and inspiring on uh, racial reconciliation um, and, a, and a biblical vision for uh, diversity within the unity of the body of Christ. So I'd, I'd highly recommend um, that book to folks. It's really good. Uh, I read a couple years ago um, a great book that I've since given to the Board of Trustees uh, by Jonathan Haidt, H-A-I-D-T, who's a professor at NYU. Um, it's called The Coddling of the American Mind, uh, but it's just on some of the uh, cultural um, challenges that we face right now, uh, that it's a really helpful book for understanding some of the things that are happening uh, in our world um, right now. And uh, I'm trying to think of the other book that I just, the title of the other book that I just gave. Uh, oh, um, great book that I just gave to our board of trustees um, by Phil Riken, who's the president at Wheaton College, um, pastored in the PCA before going to serve at Wheaton. And it's called When Trouble Comes, um, a great book on um, biblical figures uh, navigating difficult times, challenges, um, really an encouraging uh, and uplifting book that I'd recommend to folks. So those are three that come to top of mind right away. Well, I'll have to read those over our winter break, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> we will give you a long enough winter break to do that. Yes, <laughs> and I'll read a lot probably, actually. Um, what are your favorite and least favorite parts of being a college president? Mm, good question. My, my favorite part is definitely um, getting to interact with students and faculty. And part of what drew me back to academia was that there are just great conversations that go on in a place like yeah. Covenant College. And so I get to be a part of those conversations. And um, to me, that's a lot of fun. I will say that the other thing that's really fun for me is um, handing out diplomas every May. Mm. Uh, sometimes you get tired by the time you get to an end of an <laughs> academic year. And for me to stand on that stage and to hand diplomas to 200 and something graduates and, and to know uh, the kinds of young men and women that are being sent into the world every year mm. by Covenant College is a really uh, energizing moment. Um, that's a really fun thing. Uh, hardest thing, um, probably, I mean, outside of the fact that it's just a demanding job, uh, which is not the hardest thing. I think the hardest thing is that you just can't um, please everyone. There are so many different perspectives, so many different voices, um, and uh, inevitably when you make decisions, you know you're going to disappoint some people. And yeah. that's hard because you want to make everyone happy and you just can't, right. can't do it in this sort of position. Um, and so for me, that's, that's really, um, that's tough. I wish I could make everyone happy. I wish yeah. I could you know, meet everyone's needs. I wish I could satisfy everyone and uh, I can't do it. Uh, mm. That's hard. Well, I can't believe that I'll be walking across I know. Th that stage in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> you said you love interacting with students. Um, how have you been able to interact with students during this unusual season? Yeah. It's, it's been, it has been hard. Um, for one thing, I've tried to get outside more than I might otherwise because lots of folks are outside right now. Uh, we, yeah. can, we can be outside and, you know, as long as we're maintaining distance, we can not wear masks. And, um, and we've had a great fall. It's been a beautiful start to the semester so weather-wise. Yeah, so yeah. I've really tried to take advantage of that and get out and walk campus more than I might otherwise. And that gives me an opportunity to say hi to students and to ask how their semesters are going. Um, what sorts of classes they're taking, what classes are really interesting, what things are they learning. Um, mm. I try to make sure that I ask, actually ask what people are learning because I don't want just a laundry list of your schedule. I want to know how are the things that you're taking changing the way you think about your life, the world, that kind of thing. So um, that's been the, the biggest thing I've done. I mean, I've, it's, uh, I've had fewer, I've done a lot fewer meals in the Great Hall than I would normally um, just because 
we know it's one of those places where lots of people are interacting and so it's a higher risk area and so yeah. um, I try to stick to lower risk areas but have been more intentional about getting out walking around campus seeking opportunities to interact with students well student senate thoroughly enjoyed having you visit our meeting a couple weeks ago so thank you for that that was Again. fun yeah <laughs> I've heard Covenant has a new dining service. You are correct. Um, <laughs> have you had a chance to try them? I have. I, uh, I have uh, eaten in the, I have taken food from the Great Hall on a number of occasions. Uh, so we shifted this past year um, and signed a contract with Creative Dining. And um, they've done, uh, in my view, an outstanding uh, job so far. They're, mm. they're dealing with difficult challenges as well. I mean, right. you know, we, we have, no regular silverware plates. It's all paper plates and plastic uh, cutlery and everything's being served by kitchen staff so that we don't have multiple people mm -hmm. touching utensils and it's all behind plastic. And so there's a lot of limitations that they're dealing with, but um, I think they've done a good job given the, the limitations. And I've heard positive uh, feedback from students as well, which is exciting. Um, we're, we think they're a great uh, partner for us. Um, we're excited about the the new food service uh, director who um, came down to, to run the show. Um, he's outstanding. So I've enjoyed my meals, um, which is good. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard positive reports from my, my key inside source. Oh, yes. Yeah. What is a class that Covenant offers now that you wish you could have taken as a student? Oh, boy. Uh, there are a lot of classes that I see in the roster now that I mm. wish I could have taken as a student. So um, I think I would love uh, to take, um, Alyssa Weichbrot teaches a course, uh, Race and Gender and Art. Mm. Um, I think that would be a really fascinating uh, class uh, to take. I think she does some great thinking in that area. So I enjoy uh, taking that class. Uh, I selfishly would love to take Lance Wesher's course in sports data analytics. Ooh. That sounds like a fun <laughs> class, a fun class to me. Uh, I never took an econ class as an undergrad. I would love to have taken an econ, mm. but I also would love to have taken lots of different courses. I didn't take any business classes and I could benefit from a business class. Uh, <laughs> so I'd love to take a management course from Professor Quattro. Um, yeah, so lots of classes. I'm envious when I look at the catalog and think about all the different possibilities that that are out there um, you know I am too actually <laughs> yeah never never enough time to get to all exactly. the interesting stuff yeah. yeah all right we're almost out of time so there's one more question what are some challenges that covenant leadership is facing that we can be praying for mm, yeah well certainly I mean I can think of several um, since we were thinking about these things all the time. Mm. Um, one of the challenges that we face uh, is um, just the, the, what's a larger contextual challenge. Uh, the, um, all the demographic data that's available to us would suggest that in 2025 or 2026, we're going to see a reduced number of high school graduates. You're 18 years past the recession in 2007, 2008, 2009. And so there were fewer births back then, which means fewer high school graduates. Uh, so every college or university in the country is trying to figure out how to position itself or prepare for um, smaller graduating high school senior classes. Um, so that's a big a, a challenge for us that we've got to think about. At yeah. the same time, we're thinking about um, economic challenges that face uh, every college or university. Uh, the the middle, cra middle class isn't growing like it used to. That typically was where a lot of college students came from, and so that puts pressure on institutions to keep their education affordable enough for, um, yeah. for their marketplace. And then we face the challenge of, of just the culture's perception of the value of higher education. Uh, there's an increasing sort of careerism in our culture, uh, an increasing sense that you're just paying to get a credential. Um, and so you should pay to get that the cheapest way possible. And so we're fighting against a, a mentality um, that says, you know, lowest cost is the best way to get it. All you need is the diploma. Um, and, and that's never been what we've been about at Covenant College. Uh, we've always been about this rich face-to-face uh, -face residential education in the liberal arts and sciences that would not only equip people with the skills that they need, 
uh, to go into the world and to take up their calling, but that would also help to shape um, the way they think, the loves of their heart, the habits of their life, um, that would produce whole, thoughtful Christian people. And the way we go about that is not the least expensive way to provide a diploma. So um, there's pressure on those fronts that are, are realities. Um, it's part of why we're so encouraged about the initial positive signs that we're seeing on the admissions front from some of the new uh, work that we've been doing um, in admissions and in marketing. I mean, there are, last year there were 475,000 students enrolled in CCCU colleges around the country. So Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, 125 evangelical schools across the country, 475,000 uh, of which 1,000 were ours. So mm. we, we have capacity in our campus for 1,100. It doesn't seem to me like we shouldn't be able to fill that and given the, the caliber of education yeah. we're providing to even be able to uh, fill that when others might be under great greater pressure. But um, that's a real challenge. I think the other, uh, another challenge for us that's significant in my mind and significant in the mind of the, the board and the cabinet is that we live in increasingly polarized and contentious times um, in our culture uh, that seeps into the church. Um, and uh, Covenant, I think, has always been a place where we've been pretty good about having conversations about difficult issues, yeah. um, about being comfortable with the fact that there might be other believers who disagree with us on a particular policy approach or strategy for addressing an ill in society, that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, we're brothers and sisters of Christ, mm. we're followers of Jesus Christ, we're united in him. And um, it feels like it's increasingly hard to do that. And that gets amplified yeah. by uh, social media and those sorts of things. So it feels right now like, boy, it's tough to do this thing that we've always done. Mm. Um, and so we want to we want to preserve that. We think it's really healthy um, and good for Christian students to be in an environment where we're going to wrestle with hard issues and we're going to have disagreements and at the end of the day we're still going to love each other and um, we're still one in Christ mm. and and ultimately what matters most is our allegiance to him and uh, and our commitment to the authority of his word over every aspect of life so that's a real um, that's a challenge I think for uh, a place like Covenant College I think it's a challenge for any college that's trying to be faithful as a Christian educational institution and it's easy just to um, pick a camp or something as opposed to being committed to being absolutely biblical faithful uh, above everything else. Um, so the, I think the demographic, economic, cultural challenges are real um, sort of in terms of the business model of the college. And then um, that's a real challenge, I think, in terms of the mission of the college. Uh, so I think that's something I'd be great if alumni were praying for, that we'd be faithful to that calling uh, to wrestle with hard questions, hard issues, um, to be willing to look at ourselves uh, critically, um, to be willing to listen charitably to others, um, and uh, to be biblically faithful in the midst of all that. Thank you, President Halverson. I know how I can be praying now for the college. All right. Well, thanks very much for uh, getting up early on a Saturday morning. I know college <laughs> students don't always do that to come and be a part of this. Uh, thanks to everyone who's uh, watching online. We're really grateful um, to have uh, so many of you uh, tuned in this morning. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a break now, and then I would encourage you to stick around at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. I think that's right. Yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Bill Tate uh, from the English department um, is going to be uh, providing a lecture. Uh, that title of that lecture is called Joyfully to See, uh, Call and Response and the Patterns of Christian Higher Education. Um, that should be really rich. So please uh, stick around um, and hope you have a great homecoming weekend.